Today I want to share with you the secret I have learned to having freedom in your homeschool, freedom from busy work, and freedom that will not only unlock the love of learning in your children, but create lifelong, independent, self-motivated learners. Let me start with a question that I think will resonate with you if you've been homeschooling or teaching for any amount of time. At the end of the quarter or semester or school year, do you find yourself sorting through stacks of papers, worksheets, tests, half-finished workbooks and the like, and wonder just what do I do with all of this? Do I mark down a grade and then store it away in a box? Do I sort through it and then throw some or all of it away? Faced with this decision, you may find yourself like me, evaluating the meaningfulness of all the time and effort put into this stack and recalling just how much time and effort and possibly teeth pulling, mild threatening, and some blood, sweat, and tears went into creating it. And then again, if you're like me, you ponder the tough question of, how much did my kids really learn this year? And even tougher still, this question, how much of it will they remember? And so if you are like me, you have found yourself in this exact spot, and not just once, but likely at least once a year for every year you've been homeschooling. Am I right? The final question for me came down to this. Just how valuable could all of the time and effort been if now I'm thinking of throwing it all away? Really? Now let's take this one step further. I am sure you have probably found through the teaching of your own children that there are lots of things you don't recall learning from your own school days. Why? I graduated the top of my class and every day I'm telling my kids I did not learn this in school. So what are you doing differently? Many of us are using the very same methods, types of books and activities used in our own education, but somehow we expect different results? Let me back up a minute to our first homeschooling days. I remember the early days, back in 2000, that initial decision to homeschool, once we made it, freed and empowered me. I was so full of determination and motivation, I was set on presenting a full plate before my kids, giving them the best of the best. And then it happened. The rigorous pace I set for our homeschool the bumps along the way, the unpredicted life events, the daily commitment to doing it all and giving my kids the best of the best began to seriously wear on me. With all the time, the effort, and the money invested, I looked at those piles at the end of the year and began questioning my motivations and what I guess you would call my homeschool philosophy. Maybe that's why you're here today watching this video. I know it's a place many of us have been. In my situation, the, situ the situation was worse than just the piles. My kids adjusted to the long hours, the busyness of our days, the lack of playtime, my perfectionist drive and tendencies. I trained them to be the same kind of great student I was. Pros at marking off their little check boxes, filling in the blanks, regurgitating information in nice little prepackaged amounts. They were becoming the kind of student who 20 years later doesn't remember much of anything that was taught. The kind of student who at the end of the day, or maybe even more profoundly, at the end of 17 years of education, had nothing more than a piece of paper to say, I am educated. And what's more, my kids didn't really know how to just be kids. There was no fun in their day. They didn't know what to do with themselves when there was any free time. What were their interests, their hobbies, their talents? That curious toddler who used to constantly ask me, why, 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 turned into a student who didn't care why, but just wanted to know how much longer until the school day was over. This was not giving my kids the best of the best. Seven kids at that time, and one nearing high school, I was chasing my tail. So I began my search, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because if there's anything we homeschool moms are good at, it's searching. Searching for the better, the greater, and of course the cheaper way to homeschool. Well, one day I came across some advice that really shook me up. An experienced homeschooling mom suggested taking everything I felt wasn't really working for us 
anything that was weighing us down or sucking the life out of our homeschooling and put it under my bed, at least for the short term, to try a different approach. I thought, seriously, just put it away under the bed? I wasn't sure I could do this. Just the money alone invested in those books was enough to keep me from telling this idea to my husband. But the same little voice that brought me to homeschooling in the first place, that little fire began to speak up and burn in my heart. I decided that maybe I could do this for the short term just to see if it made any difference. Well, that was the year 2006, and I have never looked back. Most of what I tucked under my bed that day is now gone. In fact, most of everything we used during those first five or six years is no longer even on our shelves. This approach to homeschooling has stood the test of time for our family, and let me just add, we've been through some very difficult tests. So what change did we make? What was this new and different approach? Notebooking. Yep, notebooking. So what is notebooking? Well, here's our story. We took books, real books, books written by authors that enjoy their topics, not dry, textbooky style books, just good, interesting books, and we read. We read biographies, historical fiction, literature, nonfiction. We read books that interested the kids, as well as books covering the topics for our history and science curricula. You may be acquainted with the educator, Charlotte Mason. She would call these types of books living books. So whatever you want to call them, that's what we would read. Then to cement what they were learning, they wrote down all they found interesting and important to remember. They created their own notebooks, and this was notebooking. After reading a book or doing an experiment, taking a field trip, listening to music, viewing art, they would write down their thoughts, their findings, their own notes and summaries. They drew pictures. They found pictures and cut and pasted them to their notebooking pages. They wrote reports. They copied great quotes, poems, and songs. They drew maps, timelines. This was what we did. And you know what happened? The kids became engaged in their learning. By cutting out the busy work, like worksheets and workbooks, it opened up a window of time and opportunity for the kids to dig deeper into topics, to really get to know the people, the places, the events, the concepts, the ideas of what they were studying. It took the pressure off of them to have to learn what someone else deemed to be the most important facts and ideas. And they produced their own notebooks that told the story of what they had learned. And you know what I noticed? And is also the very reason that still, this many years later, I am still notebooking, and that this many years later we still have a successful and growing website. Notebooking is not a fad. It is a process of learning that has stood throughout centuries of time, only without this coined term we have today. When kids notebook their studies, there's not that sudden unlearning phenomena that usually takes place after your modern-day traditional worksheet, workbook, chapter, unit, test type approach. No, the knowledge that your, guide, your child gains during his notebooking experience sticks. And most importantly, this process fuels a love of learning, a spark. As your child begins to grow and discovers how exciting and fun it is to learn and actually own his learning. My kids couldn't wait to show dad and grandma and grandpa their notebooks. Remember when your child drew his first picture or colored his first coloring page? There was pride in what he had accomplished. This was his creation. Well, notebooking unleashes the same relationship with what they are learning. They spend time with the material or subject. They interact with it. They converse through their written words and pictures. And instead of finding out what Alex didn't know about a topic or study, which is what a worksheet or test would reveal, he had the opportunity to express everything he did know. And this turned on a light bulb that wasn't there before, and that's the spark I'm talking about. Trust me, for at least a few weeks, and give this a try. Put away the stuffy books, the worksheets, the workbooks. You will unlock creativity in your child. You will unlock motivation in your child. You will unlock their fears of getting the wrong answer. And answer your fear about doing something so different, 
Yes, they were learning. You will unlock their love of learning with notebooking. Notebooking did this for our family. We have heard from countless customers and site visitors who share similar testimonies, and you can see these testimonies all over our website. Notebooking, it frees your child to not only learn new content, but it teaches him to become a lifelong self-taught learner. It teaches him to be purposeful, evaluative, reflective, and decisive in his studies. It will work with just about any method, you know, classical, Charlotte Mason, eclectic, even your traditional methods. You just need to cut out the busy work and replace it with notebooking. During that first year of notebooking, I created what I call notebooking pages. Lined pages containing clip art, graphics, framed boxes for their artwork, and a variety of layouts that the kids would use to record what they learned. Think of it as a simplified, pre-formatted scrapbook page. I provided them with a variety of frameworks where they could record their info and add their personalized content. After I started sharing these notebook pages online, I began to get numerous requests for themed pages and pages for particular subjects and soon after notebookingpages.com was born. Our notebooking pages give you a ready to go structure to make the daily process of notebooking simple, beautiful, and doable. We offer hundreds of free notebooking templates, tutorials, tutorial videos, as well as a large selection of subject-based products and our notebooking web app for kids who want to do their notebooking on the computer. We make this transition easy to implement. So take a look at that pile you've accumulated at the end of the year and ask yourself, are you ready to unlock the love of learning in your children? Are you ready to see the spark in their eyes? Give your kids the opportunity to really shine by producing their own keepsake notebooks. And at the end of the year, or better yet, when they graduate, you won't have anything to throw away. Instead of just a piece of paper to recognize their years of learning, you will have shelves lined with collections of custom-made notebooks that you, your children, and their children will absolutely treasure for years to come.